Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write on each paper um, what you guys need to write. So, um, either along the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. The first one is going to say side strokes. One is going to say firm strokes. Then tapered strokes. Random strokes. I'll it's up here for you guys to see and I will repeat them as necessary. I know it's kind of small. And varying pressure. So you guys have side strokes, firm strokes, tapered strokes, random strokes, and varying pressure. Put that on No, not on both, right? No, just on the first one. Yeah. If we have time to get to the second one, I'll tell you guys what goes on the second one at that point. Okay, so um, for these first few, just choose one color. It doesn't matter which color you choose. Okay. Choose one color of pastel stick. Green. Okay. Side strokes. Um, if you guys have ever taken a crayon and like peeled the paper off the side and then used the whole side of the crayon, it's basically the same thing. Um, I don't want you to fill the whole paper. So just do a few so I can see that you can make those broad sweeping strips. This is good to know if you need to fill a large space quickly or give some of the texture of the paper. Um, if you find that your pastel is not really coloring, it's not coming off the stick, you might just have to press a little bit harder at first. Um, some of these haven't been used. So it just means it's new, it hasn't been broken in yet. Um, for firm strokes, if you've got your pastel where it's got like the corners to it, um, just pick a corner. If it's been worn down, then you can just use the tip of the worn down end. Either way is fine. Okay? But you're going to hold it firmly and push down with firm pressure just to make solid lines. Okay? Alright, for tapered strokes, it's just like the firm stroke when you're starting out, except that towards the end of the stroke, you're going to lift off the paper and you're also going to kind of twist your wrist. Okay. So as I push down, flicking, it should come to a tapered point. Like a this swoosh. one's actually really good. Yeah. <coughs> um, I kind of joked with my other classes saying swish and flick. Um, if you find that the end of your stroke is kind of the same thickness as the rest of them, keep trying to make that tapered end. Okay. Um, if you guys need help, I can come around and use this. Yeah, we're doing that right. Okay, if it looks like a J or a hook, you're twisting too much. Hold pastel loosely to where the pastel can move freely within your fingertips, but you're not going to drop it. Okay, you don't want it that loose. So it should be fairly loose and also can keep your wrist light um, as you do the random strokes. So light grip, light wrist, and you're kind of just letting the pastel catch on the paper since it's kind of a blocky form. Um, letting it catch as it goes. Um, try to do some areas lighter and some areas more condensed. Um, and that can kind of give you that scumbling effect. You guys remember scumbling where um, denser lines are darker and far further apart gives lighter value. It also gives it an interesting texture as well. So go ahead and make sure you've got a darker area and a lighter area as well as that scumbling effect. Okay, um, for pointillism and stippling, this can get kind of loud, just as a warning. So let me do the technique first, and then I will tell you when you can do the stippling, okay? Um, you can still use like two or three different colors. And just as you guys have done before with stippling, it's the same thing. Use multiple colors. Yes, use multiple colors. Why are you yelling? What? Guys. No, I'm sorry. Um, so make sure once, like I said before, have, hold on. 
In all directions. Okay. So have one area that's spread out and another area that's kind of filled in dark. I use purple and yellow. Okay, do you guys see any other colors? Purple. Yeah. yeah. Green. What, what do you see? You see green? Green. You see green? Light blue. Wait. I don't see anything. Riley, do you see? What colors do you see? It kind of just looks black from back. Okay, so I use purple and yellow, which are opposites on the color wheel. So visually, your brain wants to blend them together. Okay, so even though they're not physically blended on the paper, your eyes and your brain is saying otherwise. Um, have you guys ever done that vision test where you've got like the circle of yeah. dots and in the middle you got to like find the hidden letter or word or whatever it is? Yeah, like it's the same concept. Okay, your brain wants to blend it all together, but you got to work a little bit harder to separate the colors back out. Okay. So for feathering, um, you're going to start with tapered strokes. Okay, so um, so they're all going to be in the same direction. So if you didn't get feathering before, you need to kind of practice a little bit more. And this is really interesting if you mix different colors on top of each other, it will start to blend together and it will create a sense of movement, um, which is kind of interesting if you're going to do like grass blowing in the wind or flowing water. Okay. At least two. I wouldn't go crazy with it, but. Make sure you're getting that tapered effect at the end. You want to taper it at the end. You also want the colors to blend together. It should just be a row of separate lines. Overlap. Could you stand right there for me? Okay. Um, so as you guys know, we worked on gesture drawing before. Um, we're going to do that with the pastel, except that instead of trying to focus on stick figure lines or outlines, we're going to use the side. Gentlemen. We're going to use the side stroke to fill in the figure. It's called mass drawing. Okay. So, Layla, can you pose for me? Pose. Okay. Okay. So, she's got her head here, her torso is kind of this way. She's got her arms out. From my angle, I kind of don't really see the other arm. You guys see how I'm using the side of the pastel? Okay. Um, just want to make sure I get the rest of that in and I ran out of room for her feet. Okay, thank you, Layla. You can have a seat. Bye, Layla. All right, so I just used the side stroke for the whole thing, but by going either up and down or side to side with either the flat side or with the edges, you can see where the edges kind of caught where the shoulders were and where those arms were. Okay, the more you kind of twist and move the side stroke as you fill in for a gesture, the more movement and rhythm you're going to capture. Okay. So I want you guys to partner up. Partner up. Matt. Jordan. Do your gesture drawing. Um, at least one gesture. Um, I'd like to see you do two, but at least one. Okay. Yeah. Try to see the lines where the shoulders and hips are. Where is the weight being? Is it on the left or right leg? Things like that. Um, if you guys have already done one figure, you can either do another figure or just use this last page to experiment. Combine different Whoa. techniques, different colors. Um, playing around with the materials sometimes helps you learn something before that I might not be able to teach you. Um, it's kind of a process of discovery. So, um, um, if, for example, over my cross hatching, if I use the white over it, it would help blend in and it would make certain things lighter. Um, yeah. 